let's look at what a soybean cyst nematode is and how it came about. So soybean cyst nematode was first discovered in North Carolina in 1954. And ever since that time, it has been moving northwards all the way up to Canada. Uh, now there's a general perception, the way I see it around here in South Dakota, that uh, we don't have soybean cyst nematode. Oh, I don't think I have it in my field. Chances are that actually, these guys are already uh, causing yield losses in, in your field, in your soybean field. So since um, 1995 is when soybean cyst nematode was first reported in South Dakota. And as of last year, 29 counties have been found with this uh, uh, problem. And it's most probable that even in counties where we haven't detected SCN, it may be there. Uh, this uh, is a, a very small uh, pest that you can't easily see unless you, you have really had the experience uh, to identify it. And also, it does not cause obvious symptoms that you can tell. In fact, here we have a very good um, demo. Um, we have a resistant uh, Kalfa, which is a Pioneer 91Y40, and a susceptible one, which is um, 91Y30. And by looking at the two, there's no difference. I mean, you can't tell that um, we have uh, cyst nematodes uh, uh, causing any damage on these plants. But you would be surprised when you dig how many cysts you can see on the roots. And very soon I'll, I'll give you the opportunity. So the, the soybean cyst nematode is here. And so, uh, like I said, it's really important that we get to know about it and learn how to manage it. So how, how, how is it spread? The Serbian cyst nematode is spread by soil. Uh, the, the eggs and the first uh, juvenile stages of the nematode are so small, they are so microscopic that you can't see them. And they can't move on, the eggs of the nematode cannot move on their own. But anything that moves soil is going to move the cyst nematode. Okay, so uh, implements, uh, uh, farm implements, uh, shoes, um, uh, flood water, uh, wild animals, so uh, things that move soil from one, from one place to another are going also to uh, uh, spread the soybean uh, cyst nematode. In fact, one theory has it that probably the migrating birds might have moved it a long distance from the south or the way north. But again, anything that moves soil is likely to move uh, the soybean cyst nematode. But once you have it in the field, and nothing is done, the cyst nematode is going to increase unchecked and it may reach a level that is, it is too late uh, to bring the population density down. So that's why we really encourage growers to uh, check their fields, uh, keep sampling, monitoring the population so that if you find any soybean cyst nematode in your field already, it's uh, before the numbers can creep up then it's important that you start applying some management programs. And so here is where I'm going to pose a question. What is the threshold of soybean cyst nematode? How many cyst nematodes must you have in your soil before you can do something about it? Any guesses? One. That's right. Just one. Once you see one cyst in the soil on the roots, that's enough threshold for action. Because the soybean cyst nematode um, is a, is a, it occurs in clusters, okay? So it's not gonna be easy to exactly quantify how much is out there. So the alarm goes off once you see only one. Now, when it comes to actually looking at the symptoms, there are other things that may cause similar symptoms that are, uh, are caused by soybean cyst nematode. But, the population density of nematodes that are going to cause uh, symptoms uh, are going to be much higher that by the time you see symptoms it's really almost too late uh, for you to to control the population buildup. So in fields that have really high population density of the nematodes you you see uh, some yellowing, you see stunted plants, you also see rows of soybeans that did not close. So you know in a normal a uh, crop like this one, you can see how the rows have been uh, nicely covered by the plant canopy. 
But where you have a soybean cyst nematode, you have rows of plants that didn't close. And that tells you that you are losing a lot of yield because uh, a closed canopy is going to intercept more light and give you more yield. And then that means that uh, another problem is that the population has really built up so high that unless you rotate away from this from soybeans for a number of years, this this population is really uh, the population of nematodes is going to cause a lot of yield loss in the subsequent crops. <coughs> now, similar symptoms that could be uh, that could look like soybean cyst nematode symptoms uh, could be because of uh, nut uh, nutrient deficiency. For example, potassium. This season, a number of fields that we saw had uh, nice typical symptoms of potassium deficiency and they can be taken for uh, soybean cyst nematode symptoms. Uh, things like waterlogging can also, uh, those symptoms caused by waterlogging may look like uh, those caused by soybean cyst nematode. So the best way to really confirm that what you're seeing is probably caused by the soybean cyst nematode is either to pull the plants and Bob will show us how to do that and inspect the, the roots. Again, you must have a good eye uh, to, to be able to confidently say that this is a soybean cyst nematode. The other way which is even better is to sample uh, so soil from the soybean crop and have the sample analyzed at a plant diagnostic clinic for you. And this can tell you how many nematodes are in your field. And later on, if we get the funds, we can also determine what genotype of the nematode you have in your field. So I'm going to go now and talk a little bit about the biology of this um, um, pest, the soybean cyst nematode. So it's a, a non-segmented roundworm and it's an animal. So like any other animal, uh, it has three stages. So you have an egg, then the juvenile and the adult. So the juvenile is further divided into four stages. So it molds four times before it becomes uh, an adult. So the first two juvenile stages happen inside the egg, okay? So remember, we're starting from the egg, then you, start, you go to juvenile one, and then juvenile two. These two stages, the first two stages happen inside the egg. Now, after juvenile, the second juvenile stage, this, the, these are, they are now in a warm shape. They will merge out of the egg, and they will search for soybean roots. In fact, um, it's proposed that the soybean roots uh, may be attracting the egg to hatch and eventually will be the source of food for the juveniles. Once inside the root, the juvenile, uh, the, the second juvenile, will transform the cells in the root to form its feeding structure. This feeding structure is called a synthe a synthesia. synthesia. And in fact, the handouts that you have, uh, one of the handout uh, is uh, uh, all the information that we'll give you is in the handout uh, that is in your package. Okay, so once these juvenile stages have, are in the root and they have formed this syncytia, their feeding structure, they kind of trick the cells to supply food uh, to, the, to the nematode. Okay? So, and that's how they uh, affect plants. They take out the nutrients, which would have been for the plant, so they leak out all the nutrients for themselves. Then they also uh, reduce a nitrogen fixing nodules. Most of the plants that are infected with the soybean cyst nematode uh, usually have fewer uh, nitrogen fixing nodules uh, than non infected plants. So that's the other way they, they impact the uh, plants. And then another way that they impact plants is by uh, encouraging infection by other pathogens. So research has shown that soybean plants that have soybean cyst nematodes are more prone to infection by a sudden death syndrome and a brown stem rot. So in addition to these nematodes causing yield impact, you also have other problems coming in because of the soybean uh, infection. So the juvenile, the second juvenile stage is going to uh, molt again into the third juvenile and 
and then we mold the last time, the fourth time, to become an adult. By, the, by this stage, around the, juvenile, the third juvenile stage, the, the nematode has the shape of um, a hot dog. Now once uh, it goes to the fourth juvenile stage, then you have differentiation of the, of the sexes. You have the females and the males. So the males become um, warm-like and then they will exit the roots and they will mate uh, with the females. The females will remain inside and they will feed and uh, have the eggs. And then the barging that you see would be a body of a female cis nematode filled with eggs. Now, over time, the, cis will the, the female cis will change color and become brown. And when we go back into the building, you will see these uh, dark brown cysts that we've collected from soil that uh, would be the source of inoculum for subsequent, subsequent uh, seasons of soybean. And you can have between 10 to 30 percent yield loss without seeing any symptoms, any differences between an infected uh, cultivar like this one and, and, and a resistant cultivar, okay? So again, we are trying to show you that uh, inspecting the plants and sending in the soil to be analyzed is important for you to monitor the population buildup so that you can start things like um, planting a resistant cultivar, a rotation into a non-host crop so you can manage uh, uh, the soybean cis nematode.